In this episode, we're talking machining and making chips on the Doosan MX2100 ST. Let's get started. So to get started, let me show you the first part we're running on this machine. And along the way, I'm gonna drop some wisdom when it comes to deploying lean when it comes to machining. So to get started, this is the part that we're making. You may recognize it as the rails on the top of our pro pallet system base and our mini pallet system base. Now we make thousands of these parts. And the typical workflow is we'll get a long, whether it's a 12 or 20 foot bar that's delivered to us from the supplier. Um, it's about an inch round, no, it's 875 round. And we would originally saw it up into a bunch of different parts. Now, if you wanna know more about this part and how we fixture it down the road, check out Fixture Friday number eight and number 15. Now in those, we show you how we turned round stock into a rectangular workpiece. I call it the knife maker's method because it bolts from the bottom. But really what we're doing in this case is we're eliminating that first operation that we really didn't show in the videos. We're really going for the second operation in those. But the problem was that taking this bar, putting it in our auto saw, cutting up a bunch of blanks, um, belt sanding the ends so no one gets cut and burrs don't throw it off and then put it in a vise or I'll, I'll save another re now retired pallet because of this machine, putting it in a pallet and then um, having an operator load and unload. It was just so labor intensive. Now, one of the principles or the eight ways of lean is to uh, avoid over processing. We call that lean waste number three around here. We don't want to over process. So instead of taking a bar and cutting it into dozens and dozens of individual pieces that need to be deburred and handled and loaded in and out, we take, for example, a 12 foot bar of material. We only take a few cuts and we have four foot pieces and we put it in the side of the machine. Now, as the lathe runs, it's pulling it out, it's doing a bunch of machining and it's parting it off and then it's spitting it out. So it's doing the work of sawing, doing the first operation, and then we come to the bin, collect it, then we can palletize it on the mill and we can one piece flow. Now, I, I've said this in the past, I can't tell you where, um, but a one fast machine will always be outperformed by two slow machines working in unison. So. Um, what we wanna do here is we wanna get the first operation running unattended, creating uh, uh, first operation parts that go into a second operation machine. So the progression, again, is to come along and we take this round bar because it has a milling spindle, we cut it flat, we chamfer it, we drill, we tap, we chamfer those holes, we part off into the part collector. From there, we'll go to our pallet system on one of our Haas VF machines, bolt it down multiple parts. We have two pallets going in and out, and it makes this part here. And then after that, it goes to heat treat, comes back, and we make this beautiful part, very, very close tolerance, plus or minus one-tenth, or two-tenths total, uh, one-tenth per side on the surface grinder. And then we take those, and they immediately go into uh, installation in both the pro pallet and, and uh, mini pallet bases in assembly behind me. But for now, let's talk about how to program this machine using a cam and CAD system that isn't perfect for it. Now I do read the YouTube comments and in the first delivery episode, one of the questions I saw quite often is what are we going to use to program it? Now in that episode, I said that we use Fusion 360. Now, is Fusion 360 the perfect program for it? Absolutely not. Fusion 360 excels in dual spindle lathes. It excels in five axis 
three axis machines, um, two axis lays, that's fine, we got that down. But introducing a milling spindle, and really when you see how this machine runs, it's running two programs simultaneously with the use of weight codes so they don't crash into each other. So it's really, what we've done, it's really like programming two machines and then doing a little bit of hand editing at the control to see when we want one program, the turning program to stop, the milling program to come in, finish up the part, and then the turning program to come in, subspindle, pick it up, part it off, go home, drop off the part. Now, if we were a job shop, I would definitely recommend a, a, a cam package like Esprit or Gibbs or Mastercam. Those, uh, because of the fact that you can do machine simulation, um, you're gonna get a lot more value out of that. Now, we really only plan on running about a dozen parts on this machine for its lifetime because we are a product-based manufacturer. And so we're gonna run those programs um, just in perpetuity. And so the little bit of hand coding is okay with us, but if you're a job shop, I would definitely invest in a cam system that works perfectly with this machine. So let me talk about this machine and specifically the type of control that's running everything. So if you look at the screen, there are two programs. There's an upper and a lower. Lower designating the two twin spindles. Now keep in mind, most machines will say, uh, or most lathes will say there's a main and a sub. This is not a main and a sub. These are two 30 horsepower spindles, both a left and a right, because they're intended to do heavy milling or turning on both sides. Now, the upper is reserved for the milling head. So in a typical program, you're gonna want to do as much turning as possible. Once you've done that, then you can come in with the milling and do everything that the lower turret cannot. Now, the lower turret does have live tooling, but it's limited to 10 horsepower whereas the upper milling head is 25 horsepower. So you just get so much more bang for your buck, including rigidity. So this part in particular doesn't require any turning to be done on the right side of the spindle. Future parts will, but that's how you get the timing down, where you do turning, you either do come in with some milling, then you part it off, you send it to the right side, and then the, the uh, milling spindle will either do follow-up work on the back side of the part while the next part is advanced, whether it's bar feeder or bar pull, using the lower turret. There's so many combinations you could do with this type of machine, and it's really about putting the weight codes in at the right times. So to dig in a little deeper with weight codes, it's really very easy. Like you think a machine like this is pretty complicated, it's not. Again, you load a dual turret program into the lower, a milling program, almost like a five axis program into the upper, and then you step through it. Uh, typically, you don't want the milling spindle to be the first machine to act. So right when it gets its startup codes, you put in what's called an M900 number. So the way that this works is an M900 number, you'll put in M901, and both programs will run simultaneously. Whenever it sees, or the control sees an M900 uh, M code, it will stop. It will continue until the other program sees an M901. Now, they're both at the same uh, spot, and they can both continue simultaneously. The next waiting code will be an M902. And so you may have the lower turret do a, a, a lot of turning, while the, M, the upper turret has an M901. It's been waiting, waiting, waiting. Finally, when the lower turret is done, you put an M901 in that code in the lower, and then they continue, and, and you just kind of ping pong back and forth. So it took a little bit of time for me to wrap my mind around this, but it really is such a great system. Now, that being said, let's get to the good part. Let me walk you through some of this machining footage.
So needless to say, I've got big plans for this machine. We're gonna do as much, not just turning, but prismatic parts, like square parts that you would never suspect came off of a lathe, but essentially it is. So if you like this type of machining content and you're getting value, consider subscribing, share it with someone that might like it, and until next time, go innovate your production.